Hey Sagittarius, it's Farouche. Welcome to my channel. This is your reading for the full moon in Aquarius for your sun, moon, and rising. I hope you guys are doing well. I have some dice here for you guys I'm showing you. I'm going to throw them and see what kind of messages we get. We have two kings, so something may be to do with some men or possibly something to do with business some business decisions, big decisions. Then we have a queen, a matter of the heart. Hello, hello. And then we have this happy little daisy. This dice doesn't have any meaning, but I think it's cute. So here, let me see if I can, there we go. There it is, I hope you like it. And then we have the sun. So um, the sun is currently in your ninth house. So you're taking a departure with things. You're going in a new direction. There's new opportunities in front of you. Not really the message I have for you astrologically today. I think you guys are going to be excited to hear the message because it involves love. This is not a love reading. It's an astrological slash tarot reading. I'll do the tarot at the end. But in the meantime, I feel like uh, let's take a look at the astrology. So I'm going to do a collective reading if I have time for your sun, moon, for everyone collectively. I'll link that in the description and at the end of the video if you're interested. However, I wanted to do like specialized readings for every sign. And so here I am. Hi, guys, <laughs> to tell you where it's hitting your chart. So um, the full moon is happening in Aquarius on the 23rd of July and it's in your third house. That has a lot to do with things close to home more than anything else, but also like fa early childhood stuff, family stuff. And for you, I think that aspect of it is the most prominent. But before we get into that part, I wanna highlight that there's another full moon in a month in August. And I would say that these two full moons are working together. I'll talk about that in the collective. Jupiter is also moving into your third house on the 28th of July. It's moving back into Aquarius. And Saturn is retrograde in rulership in Aquarius in your third house. So there's a lot of frequencies here in this area. This gives you a good time for short distance trips, uh, connecting with siblings, uh, doing things around your community, just taking a walk around your neighborhood connecting with local shops and places. This is um, a lot of activity, kind of buzzing activity around the home. And so, uh, and so, yeah, I hope you are enjoying yourself and I hope you like this energy. Now, what I'm seeing for love is a bigger picture thing. It's not really to do with this full moon, but I think that it is significant for you. So we have the south node here in Sagittarius. South Node in Sagittarius has a lot of you releasing where you come from and who you are, like who you've become and so forth. And uh, it's a big pattern of releasing. I did an extended on this uh, for your sign. It's in your playlist. Your playlists are in the cards too. So if you want to learn about the transit, you can do so there. And so uh, releasing your personality, releasing aspects of your personality, renewing yourself, trying on different ways of doing things and so forth. And that's on a sextile to Saturn, which is an Aquarius. And sextiles like open up opportunities and Aquarius is in your third house. And third house, again, in this context, probably has to do with like who you are, the framework of who you are, how you got to be that way, the types of lifestyle experiences you've had, in these circumstances and how your life kind of shaped who you are. So it's a very nice sextile alongside the moon for in some way taking a look at what your origin story is, whether it's a past life origin story or in this lifetime, and then some way somehow reshaping that, you know, f to suit you better and to suit your direction. And this is now on a sextile to Chiron in the fifth house of romance and love. 
And Chiron is on a sextile to the north node, which is always opposite the south node. So we have these beautiful kind of hop, skip, and a jump energy um, between these transits, the south node to Saturn, Saturn to uh, Chiron, and Chiron to the north node. And Chiron is trining the south node, Saturn is trining the the. Uh, north node so they're all interconnected and working together now Saturn and uh, Chiron no, excuse me Chiron and the north node are in your relationship houses the seventh house is more partnership dynamics and Chiron is in the fifth house which is more romance Chiron's retrograde also which means that at this time you're kind of looking back at things and seeing how they worked for you and cherry-picking what about certain relationships was good? What about certain relationships was got bad? You're gathering strength about who you are and reflecting on how that affects you. So altogether, these transits are deeply personal. They're really within your heart and they're helping you kind of understand where you are coming from so that the North Node can direct you where you need to go. And as you've heard me say already, Aldebaran is here and that continues in the rest of July even though the exact position ended on the 15th of July and so that in some way is leading you in the partnership direction and telling you hey this is this is a good path for you and giving you the opportunity to remove from your life whatever in some way was obstructing your ability to pursue that direction to be that part of yourself so very very nice transits and that's why maybe we have two kings here um, maybe it's not just one partner that you're thinking about maybe you're thinking about several experiences that shaped who you are and so now those are framing which direction you're going so the sun um, came up in the dice roll here as a guiding kind of energy and the Sun is in rulership in Leo and a full moon is the opposition between the Sun and the moon and so the Sun in rulership is opposing the moon in the sign of Aquarius with the ruling sign of the full moon in Aquarius the ruling planet of the sign in which the full moon is Saturn is in Aquarius at this time with the moon. So we have a lot of very activated energy when we have uh, ruling planets in their home sign, they're magnified, their transits are magnified, they're at their highest peak potential. Sun in uh, Leo is like the peak of summer, right? This is, this is it, folks, <laughs> this is as good as it gets. And so um, the same thing for Saturn in Aquarius, it's one of the bl best placements for Saturn. The other one is Capricorn. And so these are the highest manifestations of these frequencies and that influences the moon. So it's a restructuring energy, right? For you in your third house as the moon is informed by Saturn, right? It's in Saturn's placement and Saturn's in the third house. And again, this informs your early development, the blueprint of who you are, giving you the ability to address and to change whatever's not working for you in terms of love and setting the course for a better direction. So overall, I'm very excited about this set of transits for you and the sun in the ninth house is just giving, that's what I forgot to mention. I'm like, where am I going with this? Uh, the sun in the ninth house is giving you direction and expansion point to the outside world. So probably for now with this full moon and the next one, a lot will change around where you are in your community and your near you. But then where that is going to really expand is in your ninth house. Boom, expansion point. And many of you will take leaps with your partner, emotional leaps, uh, just relationship leaps, progress, or if you're single, you will take massive understanding leap, leaps towards what you want in a partnership and so forth. So overall, it's a very nice kind of set of complementary transits. Neptune is also trining Mercury. 
and Neptune is in your fourth house and Mercury is in your eighth house. This is shared resources, so there could be real commitments to people around you, like in sharing property and buying a house, those kinds of things. So you could be moving into a very good space with others at this time. Okay, so let's see your cards. This is just tarot now. The astrology is good. The energy is good for this full moon. You Also, uh, Venus and Mars are at the top of your chart, so things should be flowing for you pretty harmoniously. So it's a really nice time to have Venus and Mars at the top of your chart. Okay, so what we see is uh, the, the Two of Wands, and then we have Nine of Pentacles. There's a lot of wealth around you. Um, I feel like it's giving you a lot of possibilities that were not available to you at other times. Then I feel like uh, relationship commitments are very important to you now, and you're considering them. Then we have the moon sometimes, that's Pisces. Emperor sometimes Aries. Sorry, that was my ice cube. <laughs> it scared me. And then we have the fool, the, the fool which is Uranus. Um, somebody starting a new path at the center is the Hierophant, which is Taurus, a teacher, um, a new direction. Then we have the Ten of Wands in this direction, a new beginning. And then we have the Nine of Swords, which is sadness. Some Someone around you could be struggling. For some of you, if you're father or a male figure in your life, it's possible that they are in some way struggling with personal issues at this time. And this is how this Nine of Swords is coming up. Then we have the Five of Pentacles, your, your husband, your partner as well. And then we have the High Priestess as the outcome. Profound understanding with regard to situations. I have good news for you, Sag. We have the Wheel of Fortune on the bottom. So let's take a look at these cards. So it seems like for me, there's these cards are sort of repeating between signs. And you see how I shuffle. It's very casual, but I do pick randomly. Like I don't, I, I, I shuffle I, and then I pick and I shuffle and I pick. So it's completely from any spot in the deck. Um, but I'm getting similar cards over and over through the last few readings I did. So I feel like many of us are upon change, um, underneath a cycle of change and transformation. The first real hit was that you're in a cycle of prosperity. There's people with resources around you. You have a lot of resources. You have a lot of wealth. I think that... Um, the emperor in your life, the structure in your life, particularly, like I said, a father, a husband, a partner, a significant male in your life could be going through some degree of anxiety. I think that they're afraid of change. I think that there there's a change happening at this time and they're afraid of what that change will entail. And I think that they're wary of the fact that... Um, they're going to be by themselves. There's like a doubt whether or not their future will be supported by others or or um, whether they will be alone at this time. But remember, there's two kings. So I think that this is karmically, karmically connected with other people in your life. And so to me, it feels like a father energy more so than a husband or a boyfriend. Um, it could be like, um, yeah, it, it could be a, like a structural change around you with regard to business some weariness, but it, I, I sense that somebody is really um, struggling with emotions about embracing change and worried about what direction that will lead them into. They feel unsupported and they feel like they're not going to receive the help that they need or they're going to be alone. That's the five of pentacles. So whoever that is, that is a relevant factor. Not for all. This is a message for, you know, a general message for the full moon. But I think this, 
this capacity is there. When we were talking about healing with the astrology, I feel like possibly this was relevant to this. So this is like patterning. Remember I was talking about conditioning. So this is like patterning maybe you've internalized. And so maybe fears from your father's line or from something your father believed you accepted and you adopted as your perspective on things you know when we're around people who believe certain things that rubs off on us so their anxiety and their worry in some way rubbed off on you and now you're in some way clearing this doubt and this paranoia that you're going to be alone and a lot of these kinds of deep-seated fears have the capacity of manifesting through us believing in them and then subconsciously choosing circumstances that mirror them, right? So we get ourselves in a pickle by believing a certain situation will come through. And so there's a, there's a potential here it, uh, of this whole energy clearing itself and in some way you having the opportunity to address issues in which you doubt that your life can be free, that you will have the right types of relationships and the right types of connections that you need. So this is coming up as a, a problem that you're working through and very quickly actually because of all these sex tiles, right, that I was showing you that can push you right towards partnership and receptivity for marriage, for connection with others because of your uh, kind of working through issues in which there's doubt about the kind of people you're surrounded with or the types of situations. Um, and so self-doubt in these circumstances could really stand out. Um, okay, but that's just like a little part of it. So breaking conditioning, in other words, that was a little too technical. So uh, breaking conditioning uh, for self-doubt that you'll be alone you could be working on really freeing yourself like I'm not guaranteeing that with this full moon you'll resolve everything but it's likely that you will in some way emancipate yourself from aspects of that so you know aspects of that that you feel troubled by you might be able to address and feel less this is a real card of anxiety right like this is like really worried about what will happen and how things will turn out so you may actually uh, kind of lessen the impact of this frequency this fre frequency may in some way become less intense for you or you may address certain aspects of that and feel better and in fact you have new beginnings that are of a positive nature. And I think somebody around you yourself is wary of this new start, but the new start is happening and it's definitely for a good outcome. We have the wheel of fortune here and yes, good things are coming. So again, uh, kind of private feelings, secret feelings about uh, the weight of circumstances on people's shoulders. I think that I think you're carrying a lot right now in terms of pressure, in terms of just weight on your shoulders with circumstances. But I think you're working through something with this full moon. I actually think this full moon is going to be very heavy for you, I th but not in a bad way, just in a self-reflective and like self-understanding way. And I think you're gaining valuable insights. It's a very introspective, like, what am I made of? What do I want? Who do I want to be? What direction do I want to go? And I think you're reaching some degree of enlightenment to understand what the bigger picture is. Look, the sun in the ninth house, right? And again, we're going to get two full moons when the sun is at the first degree of Leo and one when the sun is at the 29th degree of Leo. So think of this full moon as a starting point of a month-long cycle that will activate a lot in your third house. So don't expect everything to work out just this week, this week on Friday. If anything, this week will open up a Pandora's box 
of various different thoughts and feelings. And you're by addressing these feelings, right, by looking at circumstances, you're going to gain valuable insight and awareness. And with those things, you're going to grow a lot. So I really encourage you to face this energy. I really encourage you to like keep slugging on. Don't get deterred. Um, and if you feel a little bit lonely, like people around you are not there, they're working through their own stuff. They have new beginnings. They're, they're a little bit scared. So they're doing their own things to try to compensate for that. But I do feel very strongly like there will be good outcomes for you and good, good, um, good outcomes and good, good outcomes and good revelations. That's the word I was looking for. I, I really see you as having profound thoughts with this full moon to get you in the right mindset of going in the right direction. And if you don't like psychological readings, what this is leading to, I believe, so if what you can expect, this will happen for you regardless if you're paying attention or not, right? Uh, but if you like more of a practical message, what this is probably going to do for you at this time is restructure, like something in your life close to home, family, something to do with your childhood is going to be restructured in terms of what's acceptable, of, of what you're willing to accept, what kind of life you're leading, and how that limits your relationships. And when you go through that process, once you work through everything, it's very likely that there'll be significant jumps forward in terms of your availability for relationships and your experience of relationships. So it's good news. So in other words, you're going through a lot of processing, like a lot of thinking and, and stuff, but it's going to lead to a big push forward, a jump forward with regard to relationships and partnerships. You may take the next step with someone. You may be finally open to a new relationship and, and those kinds of things can really show up for you once you do the work. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you have a nice day. You can see the last, maybe you can't see it now because the sun is setting as I speak. So you're the last reading I'll do today. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a nice day. And if you want more videos, they're here in the corner. So go click through or here. And if I do that collective, it'll be right here right now. So go check it out. It'll be more technical than these one-to-one -one sessions. Thank you. Bye.